the wife and daughter of Shannon Collins, the Arkansas veteran that was last seen in March of 2021, have both been indicted by a federal grand jury. Honestly, I'm shocked, and I'm not going to say that this wasn't a long time coming because it certainly has been, I'm sure, especially for the family and friends of Shannon Collins, but I am still shocked. So just a brief rundown of the case. On March 11th, 2021, Shannon Collins came from out of town in Tennessee to his home in Pottsville, Arkansas. He hasn't been seen since that time by anybody. He hasn't been uh, heard from by anybody in his family. The only people that said that they heard from Shannon Collins are his wife and his stepdaughter. Shannon Collins was receiving a disability payment from the federal government for being in the military. That disability payment was almost $4,000. Well, it was like $3,200 a month that he was receiving. The federal government alleges that on March 12th, so the day after Shannon Collins was last heard from, his wife, Teresa, tried to contact AT&T in order to get Shannon's phone unlocked. I'm just guessing on this part, but I think that the reason she would want Shannon's cell phone unlocked is because if his phone was unlocked or the account was unlocked, she would be able to have another phone associated with Shannon's number. And I'm guessing that because of the next move that she made, which was to go withdraw $200 from an ATM and go to Walmart and buy a cell phone. She had that phone turned on and then she started messaging her own cell phone from that phone that she bought at Walmart and acting as though that was Shannon's new number. In fact, she messaged herself as Shannon saying that that was his new number, that he left his phone in a truck. I mean, all kinds of things. And then eventually texting Shannon's son, who he shared with Teresa, to say that he was in a VA program and he was going to be in that program for several months. Eventually going on to say that he was going to be getting out of that VA program and working overseas. They also pretended to be Shannon and messaged Shannon's sister Basically, the entire indictment, which has 21 counts, alleges that they purchased the cell phone. Teresa and Brittany Collins, who is Shannon's stepdaughter, purchased the cell phone and used it. Both of them used it at different points in time, pretending to be Shannon and lying about having heard from Shannon in order to continue these VA payments because VA payments were made for almost a year after Shannon disappeared. And the VA says, of course, naturally, they would not have made those payments if they would have known that Shannon was not living. Count one is that Brittany and Teresa conspired with each other to commit wire fraud. Counts two through 11 are that Brittany and Teresa conspired with each other to defraud. And that is pertaining to the 11 payments that were made to Shannon's account that Teresa had access to. And counts 12 through 21 are that Teresa embezzled the funds from that account. Funds that, like I said, the federal government would not have paid out, the VA would not have paid out had they known Shannon Collins was no longer living. Also, it is in excess of $32,000. So what do you think? It leaves me wondering if this means that murder charges could possibly be on the horizon. Arkansas veteran Shannon Collins has been missing since 2021. What could have possibly happened to this man? Where could he possibly be and who holds the answers to his disappearance? I think the twists and turns in this case will shock you as they have shocked me. So not that long ago, I received an email from Share Shannon's Story. So Share Shannon's Story laid out some details of the case. And I'm just going to share those details directly with you because I think that that's the best way. These are their words. It's their case that they know so much information about. This is the condensed version. So it starts off Share Shannon's Story. As of this writing, many of you know Shannon Collins, a disabled veteran and friend to many, went missing on March 12th, 2021. I reported Shannon missing in November 2021. Let me repeat that so it will sink in. I reported Shannon missing. His brother, who lived 600 miles away in another state, reported him missing eight months after his disappearance. Not Shannon's wife, not Shannon's son, 
not Shannon's stepdaughter who he raised, not Shannon's son-in-law who worked with him at the time of his disappearance. I reported him missing. Shannon's immediate family have refused to cooperate with police in any way. This includes Shannon's wife, stepdaughter, son, or anyone else associated with his wife's family. And if you don't believe that, feel free to give their lawyers a call. Part 1. Discovering Shannon Missing We didn't actually know for months Shannon was even missing. We were calling Shannon's wife, son, and stepdaughter to ask why Shannon was not calling back. We received a variety of answers as to why we were not getting any response. Usually, when someone's wife of 20 years and their children tell you a story, you tend to believe they are telling the truth. You don't think that they are continuously lying to you. It was only after becoming suspicious of the stories being told by Shannon's immediate family that we realized something was wrong. Part 2. Investigation Timeline Shannon Goes Missing March 12, 2021, Shannon's Last Night Investigators know that Shannon returned home to his address in Pottsville, Arkansas around 10.30 p.m. on the night of March 11, 2021. When Shannon arrived home that night, data shows that both his wife and son were in the house when he arrived. Shannon's wife tells police he quote-unquote walked away from the house on the morning of March 12, 2021. Shannon's stepdaughter then tells police she watched Shannon get into a car with a friend and leave from the house on the same morning. This means the two people who are alleged to have seen my brother alive tell police two completely different stories about when he left his house on the morning of March 12th, 2021. Facts, lies told by Shannon's family slash refusal to cooperate. Shannon's wife and son talked to police one time. Once police reached out a second time, both refused to cooperate or help police in any way. Instead, they immediately hired a lawyer. Here are the facts about Shannon's wife, son, and stepdaughter. They were the last to see him alive. They never reported him missing. They have never once called police for updates on his case. Shannon's wife tells police he walked away from the house with no car, no money, no belongings, nothing. Shannon's stepdaughter tells police she watched Shannon get into a car and leave with a friend. They lied to us for months about his disappearance. They never contacted the VA to stop his pension payments of $4,000 plus per month. They continued to spend Shannon's monthly pension payments knowing he was never coming home. They lied to police about Shannon's disappearance. They covered up Shannon's disappearance by pretending to be Shannon in text messages from a phone they purchased. They refused to help police with their investigation and immediately hired a lawyer. They tried to convince family members not to help police. They cut off all ties with my family as soon as the police began investigating Shannon's disappearance. No trace of Shannon since March 12, 2021. Below is a list of where no data exists for Shannon since allegedly walking away from his house on March 12, 2021. No phone calls made after March 12th. No text messages after March 12th. No Facebook posts. No internet searches. No checks written. No purchases after March 12th. No cash withdrawals after March 12th. No bank deposits after March 12th. He did not access his retirement accounts after March 12th. There's been no trace of his social security number being used after March 12th. No driver's license renewal, no taxes paid, no passport. There's been no records of Shannon leaving the country. Shannon missed any and all doctor's appointments after March 12th. He's never refilled any prescriptions after March 12th. He missed a scheduled surgery that was after March 12th and no contact of his disability pension after March 12th to the federal government regarding the monthly pension. So the payments of $4,000 plus per month were cut off by federal agents after Shannon was reported missing. Payments were stopped two plus years ago. One call from Shannon would resolve the issue. Shannon has never called to restart the payments. Part three, help share Shannon's story. Local prosecutor refuses to bring charges. The local prosecutor has told investigators there isn't enough evidence to bring any charges in this case. In other words, it sounds as if it's easy to get away with certain crimes in a certain county as long as you have a good hiding place and no one talks too much. Help us share Shannon's story. 
It seems this investigation isn't going to move forward nor charges brought against the people who did this without help from Shannon's community. Our goal is to bring attention to Shannon's case so people can know the truth about what really happened to him. Therefore, we are asking for your help to do the following. Please share Shannon's story and link to the Share Shannon's Story FB page with everyone of your friends list or on any social media you use. Please follow the Share Shannon's Story FB page to stay up to date on any new developments in the case. Please contact us at shareshannonstory at gmail.com if you have any information that may be helpful to Shannon's case. Please share this story and link on the Pope County Sheriff's Office and Detention Center FB page in Russellville, Arkansas. Please contact the Pope County Sheriff's Office in Russellville, Arkansas at 479-968-2558 if you have any information about Shannon's case. Please contact Pope County Prosecutor Jeff Phillips in Russellville, Arkansas at 479-968-8600 if you have any information about Shannon's case. So that wraps up the condensed version of what Cher Shannon's story sent to me. I do have some thoughts about this case. First of all, can you imagine having a wife, a child, a stepchild, and none of them ever call police and ask uh, anything about your case? They don't want to cooperate with police. And in fact, they retained an attorney so that they didn't cooperate with police. And like, you can retain an attorney all you want. In fact, I would suggest that you do anytime that you have any dealings with police, but you can retain an attorney and still cooperate with police. Just retain an attorney to make sure that you don't get yourself into trouble. But I cannot imagine not caring about your husband, right? Also, the fact that Shannon's wife bought a cell phone. She went and bought a cell phone and pretended to be Shannon, sending messages to herself, to her children, pretending to be Shannon so that she could tell police that Shannon was contacting them. Think about that. Why would you buy a cell phone and pretend to be someone unless you knew for an absolute fact that that person was never coming back? In my opinion, and this is solely my opinion, it doesn't make sense otherwise unless they knew that he wasn't coming back. And how would they know that he wasn't coming back unless they knew something about his disappearance or had something to do with his disappearance? This is a person who was getting $4,000 plus a month in pension from the U.S. government. That's enough in the state of Arkansas, especially like Pottsville area, Pope County. That's plenty for him to live an okay life on. Some might think even a little comfortable. He's one person. Why would he let that money go if he was alive and well? There is one more thing, and it's not mentioned in the condensed version, but I've seen it other places. Shannon Collins was having an affair. Well, maybe an affair isn't the right word. Shannon Collins was having a full-on relationship with another person. His wife knew about this relationship. Shannon Collins had planned to leave his wife and go be in a relationship with this other person. Shannon Collins let his entire family know that he wanted a divorce. And then he disappeared. If you're wondering how much more evidence Jeff Phillips needs to actually file charges, I'd love to know as well. But while we're waiting for Jeff Phillips to do his job, go follow Share Shannon's Story over on FB and share from there this case. Shannon Collins deserves justice just like anybody else.